welcome to the conversation. You're listening to Andy Mason, and this is Authentic Conversations around the messy intersection of faith, family, and business. And I'm sure that you can hear this hum going on in the background. That's because you're sitting on the boat with me in Seward, Alaska. We're heading out of the bay, which is that what you call it? It's called a bay. We're heading out towards the ocean. We are going salmon fishing. I'm in an adventure retreat, so that's 14 business leaders, Jesus, fishing, hiking for a week. And it's just been a profound experience. So I just figured I'm sitting here with my buddy Philip. Hey, Philip. Hello. And uh, we're just doing an experiment, sitting and having a conversation together. And we're just going to be percolating around this scripture in Luke 1 37, which says, Not one promise from God is empty of power, for nothing is impossible with God. And we've been wrestling through this journey of, you know, you're, you're working on stuff, you're believing God, you're, you're doing your strategy, but where is God in this? And how do you make room for the impossible when you're going about your normal daily business? And I was talking with Philip, and he is going to introduce himself in a moment, but then he's got this story where I think this is beautifully worked out and how God unfolded it at the end. So I trust you can enjoy this. So, Philip, who are you? Well, you know, before we get into that, isn't it incredible going out here on the water in light of this, seeing all these big mountains jetting out of the water and the, yeah, the water, beauty of God's creation yeah. and humpback whales and fish. It's like, wow, if God could create all this, all the universe, it should be easy for us to believe that nothing's impossible for him. But I know, at least for me, there's times when, you know, life and my own humanity and thinking will distract me from the reality of how big and awesome and amazing he is. And 2020 was one of those times I was in writing out of heaven and business. We were doing the everything we were dreaming for the next year, breaking into categories of what's possible, probable, and impossible. And I realized everything on my list was probable and possible. And it just hit me like a ton of bricks that as my organization, and I'm president and CEO of a behavioral health treatment facility. We do residential, outpatient, mental health treatment. And we're believing God for transformation, change, and, and miracles, and just doing all this great stuff. But in the midst of it, somehow my experience as a leader, my uh, team, the capacity of what we could do, our organizational capacity, a resource grew to the point where I realized it had outgrown my faith and my trust in him for the impossible. Wow. So most of what we were producing was actually as a result of my own strength, skill, talent that he had given me, still in partnership with him, but not leaning into the miraculous and the impossible like I did as a younger leader. So what, you, what I'm hearing you say is you're actually doing really good. I love what you said is I had outgrown my faith. So you'd been faithful, diligent, growing in excellence, growing as a leader, and you're seeing the results of this. But this realization, if I do not continually come back to where am I believing God for the impossible? Where is the where where could be the evidence of God doing something in this situation? You actually had settled into a level of performance and output that there's no way you could have done that in a few years earlier but you had grown so it was time to grow faith capacity as well so what did that look like well you're you're so right on that and i think of it as the both and because god does expect us to steward well and i never want to sacrifice obeying the principles and being faithful with what he's given me just to only trust and rely on the miraculous right so it's both but let I never abandon the miraculous and faith for just only what I can produce, yeah. right? And um, boy, that revelation for me, just first of all, it was a place of repentance. I mean, I was on my face in tears at the realization because I didn't, I didn't recognize it happening until we did the exercise. It crept up on me slowly, right? And so... Um, it started with the repentance and a cry of my heart, God, please, you know, infuse me with a new passion, a new faith. Let me continue to steward well what you put into my hands and work hard. Like, I want to get the horse ready for battle. 
but the battle belongs to you and I still want to actually trust and believe you for big things. And so that was the first step was getting before God, getting my heart right with him and asking for help. The next thing is I brought it back to the team. That helps me stay accountable. And, and you know, like I said, we've been grew, we grew 30% and 40% year over the two years before that. So it's not like we weren't growing and doing things and things that we were still attributing to God. And when I told my team, like, guys, I'm so convicted of this. We need to increase our, I mean, they looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> Eyes wide. I thought I'd, I'm all crying. And they're like, what are you talking about? But we decided this year, we did our strategic plan. That year we went into this, we said, okay, here's everything we put on our plan was probable and possible. That's how we were thinking. I said, now put it up on the whiteboard. And this was just our practical step, impossible. What are we going to believe for that's impossible? So you wrote on a whiteboard with your team. Here's our, here's our goals for the year. Here's our goals in the different areas for the business. And then you intentionally said, what is one impossible goal that we're going to believe for this year as a company? Now, for you, that your executive team are all believers, how does that work? Yeah, in our organization, even though we're not a church um, or an official Christian organization, we, we live and operate on Christian values. And so my executive leadership team are all believers, which was helpful in this instant. However, I think it could apply even in a business or a leadership team without because it's the idea of what are we going to stretch ourselves? What are we going to go beyond and say a Christian business owner with a team, maybe they have a few people on their team that aren't believers. You could still stretch and say, what are we going to believe for that's beyond our own ability that we're going to have to stretch for and believe for him. Um, and for us too, it was it was really interesting to do the exercise and see all of our goals in the probable and possible, because that just strengthened what I was saying is, what are we believing for that we couldn't do without God? Yeah. And that no no one on my team wanted to do that. I love this. So that exercise for you to do this as we're walking along, we're going to hear what happened in a moment. But just to write down, what are you believing for in three different categories? Category num- number one is baseline or probable. Probable. This is probably going to happen anyway. Uh, category number two is possible. This would be, it's possible that this would happen this year. It would be amazing that, that this would happen this year, but it's not certain. It's not guaranteed. And then you've got category number three. This is the impossible. This is the miraculous. This is the Oh my gosh, only God could have done this. And it's amazing when we start to write that down, that you start to recognize and see it and you get stretched. So Philip, what was the goal and what happened? Well, one of the things that I had written down was the acquisition of a property. We had done three pretty big capital projects in the several years before, um, all multi-million dollar projects. And we had another property acquisition that we wanted to do. $2 million was the property price. And I could see no way in my natural mind in all of our planning that we could acquire this property debt free. 100% debt free was my goal. So I wrote it down, acquire this particular property in the community we live for this particular business purpose, debt free. And um, so this was fall of 2020. We went through 21, and and so this is an important thing, I think. We didn't abandon the practical. We didn't abandon the stewardship. We didn't abandon all the things that we know to do. I told the Lord, I want to be debt-free, and I want to be done in a way that that is miraculous, that I can't take the credit for it. That's like beyond what I can do, and I couldn't think of how it could be done at the time. And then we got to work. We, we got to work, like putting in applications for grants and seeking you know funders and things like that 2021 we come into 2022 we had we had acquired 1.15 million dollars so we're eight hundred fifty thousand dollars short i had an eight hundred fifty thousand dollar possibility in the works where a foundation was going to give us initially 500 and we were going to finance the 350 at 10 year one percent interest okay so just catch this so it's growing a business that serves people getting free, set free Alaska, 
uh, out of the drug alcohol space. They're going to acquire a new building to better expand what they're doing. It's going to cost $2 million. Uh, I want you to hear this too. This wasn't instant. This was a year into this process that raised $1.15 million through donations, through surplus, through all sorts of different things. But they're still $850,000 short. So this whole thing, not one promise of God is empty of power for nothing is impossible with God. It, it, this was over time. There was a process in play. Uh, even the Luke 137 where the angel speaks to Mary, it wasn't instant. It was, this is a nine month pregnancy. It was both the miraculous tied into the natural. That's not one or the other, it's both and. God's into process, but it was a miraculous start. In this case, it was a miraculous finish. Everything seemed to start in the natural. Two million building, got 1.15, really grateful for that. We're short 850. We've got a plan for the for the 350. Was it 350 or the 500? 350. We can get 350 for 1% for 10 years. That sounds miraculous to me, but it was still what you achieved in your own ability, your own connections, your own relationships with this favor of God. Then what happened? Well, and you're exactly right, and I, and I would have took it, but in my heart, it wasn't what I was hoping for. I just was hoping for something that was obviously God. And anybody out there, whether you're in business or not, it realizes 10-year, 1% money is good money, right? Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, two weeks ago now, the foundation that we had approached met with their board to make the final decision. And in this process, they had increased the amount that they wanted us to ask for from five to six. So we had went from 500 to 600. Now we're looking at $250,000, 10-year 1%, which was another step, right? I get the call the next day. Our program officer says, look, our board just pause. So in this, we had a conversation in the middle of this and you were sharing this process. And in the middle of it, you was like, God, I'm so grateful for this but I still want to see you do something that no man could do. And then what happened? Yeah, that's right. And our team too, we had a team leaning into this together that we're trying to keep our thankfulness because this is amazing what's happening, yeah, so but not letting hold of God. This is what we're believing you for. So we get the call. The program officer says the board met last night. We decided we wanted to give you 650 instead of 600. So they increased it for the second time to 650. And I'm like, now hang on a moment. No, you said a phrase. They called you and they said a particular phrase. Structure. We don't like the structure. Oh, that's right. Initially, they told us we don't like the structure of the loan. <laughs> and we're, we're like going to be around the 13, 14 million dollar. So a 10 year, $350,000 loan is like a couple thousand dollars a month. It's for a 13, 14 million dollar organization. That's nothing. But they're like, we don't like the structure of the loan. So we're going to increase your ask from 500 to 600. That was the original increase. Hang on a moment. There's no organization. So we don't like your structure. Would normally be followed by, we're going to give you less money. Yeah. In this case, we don't like your structure. So we're going to give you more. I mean, who does that? That's right. This is the favor of the Lord and coupled with the partnership of his people. And so then the cherry on the top, they end by saying, not only are we giving you the 650, we had an anonymous donor that's going to partner with us and give you the remaining 200,000. <laughs> so here we are at the final hour, the day before our signing for the property was one week later. So we are like down wow. to the final wire and God come through and answered our prayer provided. Now we're, we got 32 beds. We're going to be setting hundreds of people a year free, loving on them, helping them get jobs, freedom from addiction, all that kind of stuff. So we get to now enjoy the blessing of the Lord and serve his people, love his people as a result of it, right? So how are you going to go back to your team and circle back around to that conversation that you had now 18 months ago, setting an impossible task? What's that going to look like? Well, I'll tell you, one of the things that's been in incredible is seeing the teams our faith you know the scripture says you will overcome by the power, blood of the lamb and the power of the testimony but it also says um, there's a, another scripture that says our faith we overcome by our faith 
And the, there's something powerful about the collective faith of a group of people. And this is, we had another impossible dream we put on was insurance. We needed over a million dollars a year to provide insurance. We checked that one off. We've actually checked off every impossible dream we have written on the whiteboard. So I'm seeing our team's faith increase. And now it's like, okay, what are we believing for next? So, so we don't want to just settle yeah. in this. And, and we do want to celebrate and reflect. But we want to continue stretching and growing and believing God for bigger and greater things. Uh, especially for the purpose of doing something for the kingdom, helping others. You know, this isn't unto just our own end, right? It's it's unto the kingdom advancing on the earth. I love it. I mean, I love so many aspects of this. Number one, the, the commitment to excellence, to grow in everything you're doing. I'm stewarding, I'm responsible, I'm growing in capacity as a leader. That's number one. Number two is you're setting goals, not just not just what's probable, not just what's possible, but leaning in, believing God for, God, what's your dream for us this year? What could that be? What could a partnership with you look like? And then writing those down. And then I love that you're actually giving yourself, leaning in, trusting God in the process and the way that you keep your heart tender and open, it's the both end, it's not either or. It's I'm walking with gratitude. Father, I'm so grateful and I'm still looking for what you're gonna do. Thank you for this, thank you for this, thank you for this. And I'm still looking for what you will do because the story is not yet finished. And then you full circle, come back around and celebrate as a team. Look what the Lord has done. Yeah, we're good, but we're not that good. <laughs> That's so right. And that second scripture I was referencing says, this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Yeah, that's good. And, uh, and you brought up a good point. The celebration, celebrating what God's done, thanking Him for it and sharing it with others is so important. It solidifies it in our heart. It spreads to others. We're trumpeting the goodness of God as we do that. And so I'll tell you, it, I believe it's so important that we are walking in all of the principles of scripture not just especially sometimes as part of a charismatic circle cling on to the miraculous part at the expense of the practical part and um, that is so important that we are believing God and stretching while honoring the other principles of scripture I don't get to maybe when I'm a young believer and immature it's it works out just fine and beyond that, the Lord's grace is so abundant, it's hard to understand. But to be mature, I don't get to be an unwise steward and waste my money and go into a bunch of debt and just continue asking God for a miracle over time. Yeah. That's laying hold of one principle and denying another. That's not how the kingdom works. I don't get to take horrible care of myself and eat McDonald's hamburgers all day and then just pray to God for a miracle every time I get sick, right? It's the same when it comes to this kind of stuff. There's so much in the scripture about hard work, stewarding what he's given us, wise planning, preparation, all these things. So we don't abandon them to say, well, God, for you to do a miracle, we need to just do nothing. Yeah. It is that idea of the horse is made ready for battle. Like God doesn't come down and get our horse made ready. He doesn't put the harness on. He doesn't do the, that part's our responsibility. Yeah. And then we give it to him and say, God, do something with it. Yeah. Like add the supernatural that we can't do mix it up with all of what we've done and then let's give you the glory for it because it all comes from him to begin with yeah. and so back unto him and one of the great books i read years ago is a missionary it was called take your glory and it was all about just continuing giving glory to god for what he's done in our lives right so so good so in the middle of it i'm giving glory i'm actually looking for the evidence of fingerprints of God, even in the small things. I'm not just looking for the big things. Uh, for us in this journey with the house, we're supposed to close on this house next week, one week from today, and I still don't have the final finance confirmed. We've got a, a spoken word. We've got a conditional approval, and it has been long. And the one side of it is there's so many fingerprints of God in this process. Just the fact that my relationship with a mortgage broker in California happens to also have a license in Pennsylvania. There's so many fingerprints of God, but there's so many aspects of this, which has been hard work. And I've had to be up late, up early, uh, sending out reports, giving more information. And a part of me just wants to gr grumble and complain. 
and yet there's it's both and and then lord i've done my part having done all standing now lord let's see what you can do so i just bless you and whatever you're facing maybe that's you need to uh, step up and increase some of the basic principles that you've ignored just believe in god for something and the other side of it is that you've been living only in what your own ability is and it's time to start to believe god for something again so i bless you that's luke 1 37 not one promise of god is empty of power for nothing is impossible with god if you want to find out more about this uh, this adventure retreat that we're on different events coming up jump on to heaveninbusiness.com backslash events you'll find out more there and we will see you again next week